If it, it's, it's sad. It's really sad that Adam didn't, didn't raise up. But I'm sure glad that God had a plan beforehand. Aren't you glad that God had a plan beforehand? Amen. Long before the foundations of the earth. He said, I've got a plan. In verse 3, we see that the ones at Bethel, they stayed back. And, and in verse 5, I read that the ones at Jericho, they stayed back. And in verse 7, we see that the ones at the Jordan, they stayed back. They didn't go. They weren't going to get close. They're going to, actually, you know, I understand. Just, just to be clear, I, I, I want to, can, can, I, can we just have a little compassion on those who didn't see what was going on, who didn't decide to follow close to the man of God? Can, can I just help you out with this? Let's, let's give them a break. My goodness, they just witnessed Fire coming from heaven. Not only did it burn up the sacrifice, it burned up everything around the sacrifice. And here's what I think what, what was what they were done. They said, well, okay, um, that's enough for me. You know, that's a story that you see all through the Bible, isn't it? <laughs> God couldn't show his glory to everybody, and we see what happens when he does. They back, we back off from it. We're, well, here's the reason, I think. It's because we're concerned what God's going to require of us. I don't know that I'll, I, can we be honest? Can we be honest this morning? How many say, I'm not sure I want to pay the price? I'm going to be honest. There are times I don't know that I want to pay the price, but I'm going to. You see, when you get to do something that you didn't want to do, only because God told you to, that's a matter of obedience. And Paul told Timothy, uh, and, and we, we read it over and over, that you have to be like a good soldier. You know, that soldier, then listen, unless there's something wrong, that soldier really doesn't want to pull the trigger on anybody. Are you listening to me? You know, I, I, I was reminded again of a, of a soldier, you know, and, uh, that, that uh, there was recently there was a, another case where a soldier threw himself on a hand grenade and gave his life for his, for his, his troop, for his, and get this, it wasn't for his troop alone, his enemy was there as well. You know what most, many of us, if not most of us would do? Hand grenade, come in. Enemies over there. Kick that grenade over there. Not this soldier. He fell on that grenade. Everyone else was saved. Who wants to do that? Anybody? Nobody wants to do that. But he was trained to do that. He was obedient even unto death. Jesus was obedient even unto death on the cross. Paul was telling the disciples, listen, he's telling his disciples, listen, you have not yet suffered unto death. Doesn't mean you're not going to suffer. <laughs> we may not want to do, and I get it, but enough excuses. Isn't it worth going through a little fire? Did you know that if you go through that fire that God it is and that God is with you? I seem to remember a story. There was these guys, they were in this furnace. They said, what in the world? They're in this furnace. Actually, there were three guys in that furnace. And they looked in it, they peered through the, the peephole, and, and, and the, the, the king said, Hey, wait a minute. I see four people in there. What's going on? Some of us, we need to get to a place where we're, not, we'll, we're willing to go through the fire. Maybe you might even have to take some friendly fire. Because that what happens when you're going through that fire? See, the holy fire doesn't do anything except strip away and, and destroy everything that is not of God, that's not pure, that's not holy. It takes it away from us. It is a consuming fire. And it consumes all those who are God's enemies. That doesn't sound nice. Well, how, how unpleasant is it when people don't, uh, they don't recognize God? That would be us. Quite often, just to be clear, every one of us from, throughout the day, from time to time, we need to get a reminder that God is who he is and he's with us always. Amen. So when it came to serving God alone, all those other people, all those other 50, they, they didn't see it. But Elisha saw it. He, he had an idea what it's going to cost to serve the Lord. He left all his prophet friends at Bethel. He, he, he left his preacher friends down at Jericho. 
no one of those prophets saw the importance of that day that of the day that was coming, but Elisha saw it. Mm. None of them saw the magnitude of the miracle that was about to take place. But Elisha, what? Saw it. Do you know how many friends that, that, that he walked away from in order to be with Elisha? He was willing to be the only one, the only one following Elijah. He was willing to leave all of them away. He was willing to be the only one. They walked to Jordan and crossed the Jordan as a group of two. Now, I seem to remember that God's worked miracles before, and I don't know what was it, like three million that walked over on dry, dry ground when, they, when, he, when he parted the waters of the sea? But this time, only two crossed over. The others were bystanders standing off at a distance. But Elisha knew he would be crossing the Jordan. But you know, he also knew that he'd be coming back without Elijah. He, he, but he never worried about that. And he didn't even worry how he was going to get back, but he already knew he was going to come back. But Elisha knew. You know, the thought of getting stranded on the other side without Elijah never crossed his mind. Being by himself, it didn't seem to bother him as much. Serving God alone, it didn't scare him. Why? Because he already saw it. He knows, he knew, he experienced, he saw with his eyes. He knew what it looked like to serve God. In performing miracles without anybody around to see it, it didn't slow him down. Uh -huh. I mean, one thing is clear, if you want to cross over the Jordan, you may have to go alone. You know, he did come back across the Jordan. Anybody know the story? Yeah. What you find out, if, uh, maybe I'm jumping ahead, that's okay. What you find out is that he saw Elijah. But there was something that fell from a chariot. So he takes up that mantle. He brings it back. He rolls it up. And he comes to the Jordan. And what's he do with that mantle? He strikes the water. What happened? Well, he walked back across the Jordan on dry land. But he came back alone. You see, one thing is clear. If you want to cross over the Jordan, you may have to do it alone. Your wife may not want to go. Your friends may not want to go. Your husband may not want to go. Your children, your parents, your friends, they may not want to go either. I have decided to follow Jesus. But you've got to make sure that it's Jesus. You've got to make sure that it's the Son of God, the Spirit of God, not just a spirit that you're walking in, but you're walking in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. You see, they might be content to stand afar off and watch you make the trip all by yourself. And that's what happens in a lot of churches today. They'll watch the few just burst into flames on Sunday morning from the pulpit and from the work, you know, and with the worship teams and things like that. And, and, and you just sit back as a bystander and say, yep, I was there. But you know what? Elijah, he saw the importance of not letting others hold him back. Many people never advance in our walk with God because they would have to walk it alone. Enoch walked with God alone. Noah, oh man, he walked with God alone and people made fun of him. And then there was Joseph, he walked with God alone. David. David out there, out there in the middle of the night, and he's watching over these sheep, and he walked with God alone. And there were others that did that as well. So Elisha saw it. He also saw get my mouse in the right place. Come on. There we go. The blessing of being a learner. Look at verse 9, if you will. Someone read verse 9 for me. Chapter 2, verse 9. Big and loud, Sister so Margaret. Was, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elijah, Ask 